right after the independence during the French time, we have had terrible earthquakes. But this one is worse because Port-au-Prince is so populated. So what we are going through now, whether we discuss how to bury our dead, uh, whether we discuss how to take care of the people who are hurt, we should really prepare ourselves for a better rebuilding of Port-au-Prince. We are not here in Chicago going to rebuild, but we should all, Haitians and friends of Haitians and all the people in the world that who have shown so much interest we should keep our eyes open that the little, all the money, not the little bit, all the money that they are pouring, in, which is pouring in to help us, that this money is really used for rebuilding a better Port-au-Prince. Port-au-Prince is sitting on the fire, on the line of earthquake. Yeah. We may have earthquakes again. We have had many, many uh, aftermaths. We may have some others, could be bigger, could be smaller. We pray that we don't, but we have no control over that. But at least when we rebuild, schools should not be built in certain area. I was reading that last night on the internet, and I was glad that somebody was saying that same thing. We should think that since our island is sitting on the ring of fire for earthquakes, we should not desert the island, but build our cities, our places, with the strength and the wisdom to avoid so many deaths, like certain schools should not be built in certain area. Yes, One I more thing I wanted to do without uh -huh. taking too long is what do we do for our relatives who need medicine in Haiti? That's a very good question. When is this going to be fixed a little bit that people can send help? Not yes. just money. I just called today. I gave money to this channel. We all are doing this, and I encourage every Haitian to, to give money to those who are collecting for us. But us, when we want to do something directly, when are they going to put a structure for us where we can send things directly to some people that we know? That's a good now, one. Uh, we have a website. It's called HaitiCrisis.org slash Haiti. A lot of information we didn't have time to give you tonight. We're going to put them on the website. HaitiCrisis.org and slash Haiti. Thank you, everyone. Paul Press is devastated. What we may do, however, is that while instead of concentrating on poor friends alone, there are many outskirts, out places that are also affected. In uh, uh, Grecier, Léogane, uh, Jacques Mel, Aquin, Tiguave. Mm -hmm. See, people are talking about poor Prince, poor Prince, and not these places. These places need help also. People need intervention also. They need uh, 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 surgeons, orthopedic surgeons, all kinds of medical doctors and medical help, yeah. anesthesia. For, for people, they, they had an amputee, uh, they amputated a little, little girl, or many, I would just say a little girl, many people, without any anesthesia. So we have dire issues. In terms of other things that we want to send to our families, it's, it's, it's a priority, but it is not something yeah, I don't think anybody can say is going to be next week. Dr. Augustine, is there any organization in the Haitian community uh, who provide support for those that their family die in Haiti? Yeah, any organization that providing uh, as far as uh, somebody that where they can go and talk and uh, and uh, get some stress out. It's not organized yet, but it's something that the um, probably will be in the process of doing, particularly at the Congress. And at the, there's a, a, a meeting that the one of the meeting that we had last week okay. that the Red Cross said that the well we need to take care of ourselves yes. because if we want to help. The people yeah, in Haiti, and then we are not strong. Then uh, you know who is going to uh, to help That's them? That's it. Because the international community, they are doing a fantastic job. But we Haitians, we have or Haitian, Haitian American, we have to do the job uh, uh, as, as well. So we need to make sure that they, from a mental standpoint, from an emotional standpoint, people can 
be strong enough to tackle the immense work that they, uh, that's laying ahead. Yes. It's a lot of work now. But it's, like you said earlier at the beginning of the show, it's what will happen later on is going to be a more But also, I mean, point. yes, of mm -hmm. course. Uh, the, I, well, not of course, I mean, I guess I wanted to say something. Uh, the that's the role of the churches, isn't it? Yes. That when people are in distress, they go to their church. Yeah. Yes. That's the role of the pastors and the priests. That is what they do. That's what they should do. So in a sense, there should not be a lack of uh, individuals in the community to... to, to, to to uh, welcome and to uh, try to alleviate the pain and suffering of the of the congregants. Okay, so we have a question in the audience. Well, actually, it's just uh, to agree pretty much with what this uh, gentleman is saying, because one of the concerns that we had from a church standpoint is that we wanted to address this from a holistic standpoint. We do know that what lies ahead with what's going on in Haiti, that not only the people are expected to die, you know, from their injuries because they, they're not getting the proper medical help because there's just too many people out there injured. But we're also looking for people, like you said, from emotional, mental, um, uh, their spirits are broken. And how do you reach these people except through a spiritual standpoint? So next um, step for us is to just approach it where we are helping people with our outreach youth ministries. And that's what the Beverly Hills Seventh-day Adventist Church in Chicago, on the south side of Chicago, tomorrow evening, we have the victims' families who are coming so that we can help them cope through prayer and with worship. And eventually, it's just look around us. Sometimes when people are happy, they sing. Yes. When they're sad, they sing. So what better way to approach it except to, through prayer and worship? It helps them uh, be strong. One individual from our sister church in Evanston, for example, lost five members of her family. Mind you, last night I did everything to keep from crying because even though she lost five members of her family, she felt the nearness of God. And that's what was keeping her, even though she has lost a tremendous amount of weight in the past week. But she still feels the, feels the nearness of God. And that's what we need to understand is that we draw strength from one another when we help approach and tackle the physical and emotional and mental status of these individuals who have lost members of their families. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. No, I, I, uh -huh. I don't know if anybody should keep from crying. If you feel like crying, you cry. Right. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's that. one of the ways that you have to release. I mean, to, to attempt to try, to, you, may, you may develop stress by trying to mm -hmm. uh, hold to yourself hold up, from crying uh -huh. yeah. in front or in face of, of such a, a, a devastating uh, event. So. Uh, what, what I'm, I'm, I would encourage people who feel like crying, crying. to uh, cry, who feel like screaming to scream <laughs> yeah. against death. Uh, uh, while, while he's saying that, uh, I have some report. I was reading a report today, and our denomination, we lost 300 members. That's not, that's not but easy. See, I think the that's way we, should, we have to look at it, if I may, uh, uh, with indulge respect, that the, the human family has lost many yeah. people. So, uh, see, we, we have to stop talking in general in terms of 